What's up, guys, gals, and everyone in between? Uh, Sean Colton here from Colton Photography. I wanted to come to you today uh, while I'm just over at my friend's place uh, taking care of uh, her cute little kitty cats um, to talk to you about something very interesting and exciting that's possibly going to be taking place in the photography industry this coming week. And that is the re announcement from Panasonic of a full-frame mirrorless camera. Now... In the last month, we've had some exciting news that finally, after all this time, Nikon and Canon are jumping into the full-frame mirrorless market. Now, what they actually announced, it has some interesting features. It has some things that it's finally, we're going, yes, you're finally doing this. But at the same time, it quite literally still feels mostly like they... They're not considering the rest of the industry. They're not considering the rest of the marketplace. And they're only looking at their lineup and ultimately protecting both their DSLR market for professionals, they view, and they, for example, on Canon's side, their cinema lineup. Now, on the Panasonic side, though, this is where it gets really interesting. Along with this, they're announcing some partnerships. That's been pretty clear and almost quite sure. Two of these partners that we know are almost 100% positive are with Leica and with, and with uh, Sigma. There's also rumors, though, of Samsung being in the mix. Now, let's talk about the sure ones to start. So, partnership with Leica. That's kind of to be expected a little bit. Panasonic has partnered with Leica for quite a long time now in terms of using Leica's ability to make lenses and their incredible glass technology in Panasonic lenses. So they're Panasonic Leica branded lenses. That's not surprising. That's kind of to be expected. But one of the big debates now with Panasonic being so invested in the Micro Four Thirds marketplace with the G9, the GH5, etc., is what kind of mount is this going to use? You can't use Micro Four Thirds. The mount simply is not big enough. So now there's speculation, well, is this mean it's going to be Leica's uh, specifically L mount? So it's the Leica L mount, which is what they're using in uh, Leica's full frame mirrorless camera, the SL. If this is the case, um, this is actually quite exciting because it means that right off the bat, we will be able to not only use the existing Leica L mount lenses, although the amount of people that are going to buy them is another question because they are pretty much, I think, starting at about $3,800 American and going up from there. Um, but it also means that there's adapters and you can use all the other Leica glass on it, like the Leica M mount and um, I think there's one other. Um, so that's exciting. There's rumors that along with this announcement, they're going to be announcing three new lenses to start off that are uh, probably Panasonic manufactured, um, but using Leica's technology, of course, as they've done in the past. What's interesting is what the rumored lenses are, though, and I think they're far better placed right off the bat to make this system interesting to professional photographers or filmmakers than any other uh, of the new mirrorless announcements from Canon and Nikon. Nikon's rumored, you know, they're not deluxe lens that could be amazing, but it's manual focus, and there's already other manufacturers making incredible lenses. Um, and Canon, yes, they have a 51.2 to start. That's great. But they really don't have what would be considered the staple glass that you need. Because they're not coming, neither system comes out with a full set of primes. They're all using adapters, um, which can be great because native mount, but it's still adapters. On the other hand, what we are hearing rumors of is Panasonic launching with the 24 to 70 f2.8 and a 70 to 200 f2.8 staple zooms of professional photography. To me, honestly, if they announce just those two lenses, this system will instantly be placed into a competitive space. 
And then if you want to really step up, you have the Leica glass, the real Leica glass from the L series um, to use right out of the right out of the bat. Um, and there's also rumors of a 50 mil that they would announce along with this. Those are like the staple three. That's fantastic. The only thing they could have done a little bit better maybe is announce an F2.8 wide angle like a 12 to 24 um, or something in that similar range. Now, that's the Leica side. That's interesting. That's exciting. Um, and there's some good potential there. The other really pretty established rumor is that they've partnership with Sigma. This could be exciting. Now, what people are talking about, of course, is the expectation. Well, does this mean that maybe right out the uh, out of the wheelhouse, the L mount is going to be open sourced, and Sigma will already be immediately on board, either with a mount adapter like the MC11, or actually announcing their art line coming out in the L mount um, right away. Um, as in, we're going to be launching these lenses in the coming months, and instantly we know the type of glass that the system is going to have right out the gate. If that's the case, that would be huge. That would be absolutely incredible. But here's the other side that I think a lot of people are not talking about. And it involves the third potential partnership. And that's Samsung. Now, Samsung, a few years ago, I think it's going on about four or five at this point, jumped into the interchangeable lens camera marketplace with their NX line. These cameras were actually really incredible. And I think a lot of the reason that they weren't bigger than they were um, really came down to just establishing themselves in the marketplace and a limited lens lineup. But if we looked at their sensor technology, their autofocus technology, Samsung was running right up there with the best of the market. And the best of the market right now in terms of sensor manufacture is Sony. Now, Sony, one of the reasons that they are the market leader is, like a few of their reasons, is aside from them making incredible sensors, they also hold a lot of patents a lot of intellectual property that manufacturers can use, even if Sony doesn't design their sensor, they can use this intellectual property in their sensor designs and then have Sony manufacture them. And this is huge. This is what really pushes Sony to be the market leader right now for larger sensor camera manufacturer, why they're making the Hasselblad sensor, why they're making the sensors for Nikon, why they're making the sensors for so many, like even I think the, if I'm not mistaken, the Panasonic, at least the GH5S uses a Sony manufactured sensor. There's good debate over whether it's a truly a Sony design sensor or not, but it's interesting. What's not talked about though is the one of the major reasons that keeps holding people to Sony because of that intellectual property makes it hard for others to compete. But Samsung made incredible sensors. Their APS-C sensor in the NX1 was so good that even to this day, it's competitive against APS-C sensors from Sony. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. If Samsung jumps on board, it means that it disassociates um, Panasonic from Sony and having to use their sensor manufacturing technology. It brings in Samsung's incredible, incredible knowledge base in sensors that they had in smartphones and even the NX1. Their incredible autofocus that they, the NX1 had that honestly has been where a lot of people have criticized Panasonic and I will say, at least in adapted form, yes, my old Canon was better at specifically uh, continuous autofocus than my GH5 is, even though I would say my GH5 in studio with eye detect autofocus is far superior. <clears throat> but what's really interesting, and people are not kind of pairing together, 
is another potential aspect of the Sigma partnership. And that's a piece of technology that Sigma bought a number of years ago. They bought the intellectual property because they bought the company for a different type of sensor design. Now, there's really kind of a few sensor designs on the marketplace. Um, most of them are different types of bare patterns. Bare is a specific pattern of sensor, the way the color pixels are arranged on the sensor. You have to remember that a, a traditional camera sensor has separate pixels for different colors. So when you say it's a 30 megapixel camera, it doesn't have 30 megapixels of every color and luminance in terms of what it grabs for information. Each pixel detects a specific color. Now, specific color as in one of the three, red, green, and blue. But it still means that each pixel doesn't uh, discards the information from other colors. And that's a loss in data and also a loss or an increase in noise level. What's really interesting is the technology that Sigma bought. It's a type of sensor called the Fovian sensor. The Fovian sensor actually completely gets rid of the bare pattern. It gets rid of this whole pattern of color completely. It's inspired based off the idea of traditional film, where instead of having uh, pixel bins next to each other, which form the, very, the red, green, and blue channels and the detection of light in each of the colors, it actually layers it within the circuitry substrate. This is exciting because it means that we no longer would have an image based around the uh, triple color um, pixel sites. It means technically and uh, complete, uh, like a really real world incredible change in potential. Now, you might be wondering, well, why hasn't Sigma done uh, used this technology? Why haven't they? Why did they buy it if they weren't going to use it? They have. However, they don't have the sensor manufacturer knowledge to really, really implement it uh, to its fullest. And their cameras themselves don't have enough of a following to really to really make a difference in the marketplace, nor do they have the other tech to back it up. Sigma being on board, it might actually not matter much about their art lenses. This could be all about the Fovian sensor. If Panasonic releases a full-frame mirrorless camera with a Samsung-manufactured Fovian sensor, this could be a game-changer. This could upend the marketplace and really give Sony a run for its money and in truth I think beat them the micro four thirds sensor that's in the GH5 and the GH5S is an incredible sensor the menu systems and the camera design in the GH5 and the G9 and the GH5S are better than what Sony has arguably they're more user friendly the design is m more comfortable, more ergonomic. If Panasonic does this, it could be a game changer. And on top of all that, the rumors now is that actually Panasonic won't be releasing one, but two full frame cameras. That means potentially, are they going to go down the route of Sony, where we have a high resolution camera and a consumer camera that is a lower resolution or better yet are we going to go down the route that Panasonic has done in the past where we have a video centric camera like the GH5 and a photo centric camera like the G9 the rumor right now is that one will be around uh, um, in the 20 to 30 megapixel range and the other's going to push 50. Well, that's exciting. We'll see because there's the other aspect that if you just scaled up the micro four-thirds sensor that's in the GH5 to full frame, that could be an 80 megapixel sensor. 
That's medium format territory, pure and simple. So where does this go? I think in the next couple of days, we're going to see the photography industry, which has already been highly, uh, almost combative around the Nikon and Canon releases with YouTubers defending Canon's move and Nikon and focusing on soul things like single card slots, which as a professional, I want two. I used to shoot on a camera that was only one, but I now shoot on one that has two. And I like that better. It's safer. It protects me. It protects my client. It's what I want. But I don't really say that the camera is bad just because of that. Those cameras are not interesting because they're not innovative. They're not pushing things. To me, it just speaks as they are not getting everything out of the camera that they can and asking a price point that banks on their name and not the technology in the camera. But if Panasonic drops two incredible full-frame cameras with Sigma on board just making art lenses, let alone a Foveon-based sensor manufactured by Samsung, and two of them that are rumored to, at least one, have 422 10-bit internal recording at full, full sensor readout, scaled down and not pixel binned, with IBIS, with potentially a focusing system developed by Samsung from their NX1, which arguably four years ago was able to compete against Canon's dual pixel AF. If that's the case, things are about to get really interesting. And that's my thoughts. So, if you guys liked this little take um, on things, let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell and uh, help me create more videos if, that's the, if you enjoyed this. Thanks so much, and until next time, take care.